So now that we know about the different type of NAT rules uh, within Checkpoint, uh, we can create some uh, NAT rules within the Checkpoint firewall. So go into the network diagram. Uh, the first NAT rule we will create is the static NATs. Uh, we will be coming from the external side. Uh, once we hit the external side of the firewall, the firewall will static NAT it to a server within the DMZ. So we'll use this server here uh, on 172.20.0.15. Uh, and so we can uh, now open up the smart dashboard console and uh, create the static NAT rule. Before we create the static NAT rule though, uh, I'd like to show you the NAT table. So by default it's got the two uh, NAT rules which are here uh, when you first install the gateway. These are just the client side VPN NAT rules. So there's no NAT rules for anything that we've done, uh, but there will be shortly. So the first thing we need to do is create a mail server. So give it a name, mail server, and give it the uh, the IP address within the DMZ, which was 172.20.15, no, .0.15, and then let's supply the NAT rule. So tick this uh, add automatic address translation rule. Uh, specify that it's a static NAT, not a hide NAT, and give it an IP address on the external side of the uh, firewall. We'll use dot 15 and specify which gateway it will be on. We've just got the single gateway installed and hit the OK button. Now before I hit the OK button, uh, if you look behind this dialog, you see the, the, the two uh, NAT rules within the NAT table. But as soon as I hit hit it, uh, it's created two additional NAT rules. Uh, the first one, so if we look at the NAT table, uh, the first half of it is the original packet. The second half of the NAT table shows uh, how the packet is translated. So the translated packet. And the, the two NAT rules it's created, the first one is saying if the source is the mail server, destination is any, services any then uh, do a static NAT on the source address keep the destination original keep the service original the second one is saying um, if the source is anyone coming to the mail server the service is any uh, keep the source original but do a static NAT on the destination address and keep the service uh, original on the translator side so um, now we've got our static NAT rule in place uh, we can save the policy once we've saved the policy we need to install it. okay so it's the correct gateway uh, the OK button and this will install the NAT rule on the gateway okay so now we can see that the uh, policy installation completed successfully I had to pause the video there for a moment because the the policy installation does take a, a short while on the uh, checkpoint firewalls. Um, so we can hit the close button. The next step is to test the NAT rule. And although I don't have a real DMZ mail server, uh, we can still test it and uh, show that the NAT that has uh, been implemented is doing what it should be. So if we go to the um, command prompt, and we'll do a telnet test to the external side of the interface, the external side of the, the external address of the mail server, should I say? Let's do it on port twenty-five. Okay, so now what we can do is open up the Smart View Tracker Console. There it is. And hit the go to bottom button, which will show us the latest uh, connections. And if we look down here somewhere, we should see our 
uh, SMTP connection which is here if we double click that it will give us more details about the, uh, the packet or the connection uh, we can see that the source was my laptop which is which we are imitating it's coming from the external side of the gateway 192.168.0.4 looking at the network so on this side of the network and we're going to destination 192.168.0.15 um, and that has been natted to the uh, address 172.20.0.15 so that's proven that the connection worked successfully so the next uh, NAT we can implement on the checkpoint is the high NAT so if we uh, close this dialog box down and uh, go back to smart dashboard and uh, looking at the network diagram we can see that our internal network is 10.10.0.0-24 uh, uh, so if we create a network uh, node or network object call it internal network specify the network address and um, now we can uh, specify the uh, the NAT details uh, no name already used okay so I think I created a network uh, node earlier on today so if we open up that okay it's already there if we open that up it's uh, exactly the same as the one I've just created or tried to create so if we hit the NAT tab uh, we can specify the uh, the, the NAT details um, so specify the add automatic address translation rule and the translation method is a hide NAT uh, and we can just hide it behind the gateway IP address or we can specify another address on the external side of the gateway um, so specify the gateway is going to be installed upon which is uh, the, the only one we have and hit the OK button and as you can see it's uh, put in two additional NAT rules uh, number five and number six the fifth NAT rule is saying if the source is the internal network and the destination is the internal network the service is any don't do anything on the translated side it's all internal uh, traffic and number six is saying if the source is the internal network uh, the destination is any the service is any do a hide NAT uh, this is one thing I did forget to mention so the hide NAT you can see a small H where the static NAT you can see an S um, and keep the destination service the original so if we save that and we do a policy install and I'll have to pause the video the, the policy does take at least a minute to complete so I'll hit OK on here and I'll just pause the video for a second so now that the policy has been installed we can hit the close button and we can test the hide NAT um, so I've got a virtual a Windows machine uh, that's representing the internal side of the network so if we go to the command prompt and we just do an IP config just to confirm the IP address is coming from the internal side of the network okay so it's representing this uh, host here now if we do a ping and I will ping the external side of the internal side of the router so the 192.168.0.1 address 192.168.0.1 enter so that's uh, come back successful and now we can minimize that open up the smart view tracker and hit the uh, go to bottom button to give us the latest uh, details on the packets uh, 
and it's uh, it, the, the the packet we're looking for is this one here. So if we open up that, uh, we can see the source address was the 10.10.0.15 uh, IP address. Destination was uh, 192.168.0.1, uh, and if you remember, we used uh, the uh, the the gateway interface to, uh, to do the NAT translation. So if we look at this XLATE source address, it's the 192.168.0.10. So that's uh, worked uh, successfully. So the last type of NAT is the manual NAT, and I'll quickly just go over the manual NAT, which is done uh, within the NAT table itself. Um, so if we go to rules and add a new rule uh, at the bottom of the NAT table, we can see that the uh, rule number 7 has appeared. Uh, we can specify the objects manually. So, for example, if we were doing one for the mail server on a specific port, uh, we were sharing one external IP address, we would uh, specify the destination address as let's just say the gateway so it's using the 192.168.0.10 address um, specify the service as SMTP and on the translated packet well, we've got an object for mail server so we can just hit the mail server tab and um, and then you'd specify the uh, gateway it's installed upon and you would do exactly the same for the um, HTTP service so you'd have the gateway as destination. Uh, the service would be HTTP, and the uh, you'd you'd specify the node uh, for the HTTP server, and uh, provide the uh, gateway it would be installed upon. Um, okay, that's it from me. Uh, thank you for watching.